Hey guys, how are you going? I'm Bree the Baker. Um, tonight I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to become a qualified baker. And I'm also going to talk where I'm from and things that I've done within the process from becoming qualified to what I'm doing now. So pretty much, in a nutshell to start you off, um, I live in Christchurch and I have been baking now for probably about seven years and I've been qualified now for four years in total. Um, it's kind of funny because my story sort of starts out with me not knowing what I was going to do when I finished school and I thought, oh, maybe something in hospitality because my dad's a baker. So to start off with, I didn't actually think that I wanted to become a baker because on my average weekend, I'd be working in the bakery anyway. So I thought, oh, I still like hospitality, but um, I want to try something a little bit different. So I went to CPIT and I referred to someone to talk to about hospitality and hotel management. Um, and pretty much I came out feeling a little bit deflated because the person that I talked to said that when I finish, and it took three years, I think it was, and a total of $12,000 for the course, um, I could possibly be a manager at McDonald's. And I thought, actually, no, that's not what I want to do, and that's not where I want to go and who I want to become. So Dad said, how about you try a baking apprenticeship with me? And I thought, actually, that's not a bad idea. I don't really know why I didn't think of that first. Um, so the sign-up process wasn't hard at all. We literally called up Comp and Tens and someone came out straight away, went through all the paperwork and explained the process of how the apprenticeship works, which is three years. And you have on-job training and then you have off-work course training and then you've got your paperwork on top of that. So for my first year, the paperwork was pretty straightforward. It, it is reasonably easy for your first year. It's more health and safety and kind of common sense. So you do your paperwork and then you get to go to a course where when you're not doing all of your work at um, your on-job training, you get to explore other options with an off-course training, which means um, A, you get to do different things that you don't normally do at work, which becomes routine after a while. <coughs> Excuse me. And... B, you get to start networking with other apprentices within the trade, which is baking for me. And it was just fantastic. It's so eye-opening because you are so confined within your workspace. And then when you get to go to your off-job training, you get to meet all these other apprentices. You get to start networking. You get to start learning things that you don't normally do at work. And it's very inspirational. And you go back to work with another skip in your step and you think, gosh, we learned how to do gateaus, um, we don't make this at work, um, let's approach our work manager and say, hey, how would you feel about starting creating something new at work? Um, obviously, when you're first starting out, your confidence isn't that high to be able to just walk up to your boss and say, hey, let's make gateaus because we don't make them at work, it doesn't always work like that. Um, but then as the second, second year goes on, the paperwork becomes a little bit more comprehensive and it becomes a little bit more technical as well. But it's not really a worry because there are so many people within the trade industry. If you get stuck, you can call. Um, and then, of course, you've got your second year's course, which is two weeks rather than one. So any queries, you can take it back to your off-course training. And any manager or the staff that's in charge of doing the course training will help you with anything that you need or are stuck with. Um, so pretty much that's the consistency of your apprenticeship. It takes three years and the paperwork gets a little bit more trickier as, as you're going on. Um, but I loved it. It was absolutely fantastic. And the joy of doing a trade, um, for me, baking, um, you're earning while you're learning. So I was doing, you know, three years of training, which... In the back of my mind, I was like, I was going to do hotel management and that was going to cost me $12,000, but I've actually managed to bank, not all of that, but half of that, and save and have money in my pocket by the time I've finished. Um, so that's definitely a massive perk of doing a trade. You get to earn while you learn. Um, for me, progression was quite fast after I finished my apprenticeship. I had quite an over-active um, imagination, so... 
I get a little bit bored if I'm doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so one of my mentors suggested that I enter in the Young Bread Baker of the Year competition and I thought, oh, I'm not 100% sure um, because it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone and the work that was involved was extremely technical. And I was like, oh, I have just finished my apprenticeship and I've done all the book work, so it is fresh in my mind, so maybe it won't be too bad. Um, and I gave it a go and I'm glad that they pushed me to do it because I wasn't going to do it. Um, and I managed to win the competition, which was just phenomenal. And from that competition, I have networked with so many other people and introduced myself to other people within the industry that I wouldn't have if I hadn't have done the competition. So from that I won a grant and I thought hey I could really do something with this and I used that grant to actually set up my own little at home test kitchen and from that I thought oh cool I'll create a Facebook page for it and I'll post the pictures up of things that I'm making and it started to get momentum and a little bit of interest so I actually approached the manager at work who's my dad um, that's probably one of the perks of my job is I don't feel uncomfortable to approach my manager um, and I said hey how would you feel about me actually making these and then trying to sell them in the shop and he thought oh okay you know you're making cupcakes and a few slices what's the harm um, and from starting off on my Facebook page having 150 followers I now have 15,000 followers and I actually have a business out of it so it started off making a couple of cupcakes and slices to making these weird intricate donuts and fancy cheesecakes and I'd just post them up on my page every day and say hey guys this is what I've made today um, come in and try it if you feel feel like you want a sweet treat and it just took off and I wouldn't change it for the world it's absolutely fantastic it's so exciting and it's such a rush and a buzz and to know that I was this girl that didn't know what she wanted to do when she finished school to actually being a successful business owner. It's kind of like this bewildering feeling like how did this actually happen and and look how I've come from leaving school to actually now owning my own business. So your only limit is yourself and I really push people to get outside your comfort zone and don't question yourself you know if you have a bit of self-doubt just put it in the back of your mind and say you know what um, I may not know what I want to do when I leave school and this just doesn't apply to baking it applies to everything in general um, you may want to become a mechanic or be a builder and you're just not 100% sure at the end of the day worst best case scenario if you're going to finish your apprenticeship and you may not want to be that trade but you have that trade under your belt and you have a qualification and you earned while you were learning so you didn't have to pay anything for it rather other than your set up cost fees which is not a lot compared to university and you have a qualification um, my first plan when I started my apprentice, uh, apprenticeship was that I was going to do the apprenticeship save the money that I was earning and then go overseas because with that luxury of saving all that money I had the ability to go overseas and also had a qualification so it meant I could travel and I knew I wasn't going to be out of pocket and then when it came to that point where I needed to make the decision to come home whether or not um, because I was running out of money I could apply for a job and I knew that it wouldn't be hard because I'd have a fully qualified qualification underneath my belt so you know it, it doesn't really matter whether or not you enjoy it in the short term because there are other opportunities that can come out of it which is absolutely fantastic um, so life of baker early starts it's it's not that bad you if you're thinking of becoming a baker and that's something that you're worried about um, just set that at the back of your mind because it's not really anything that's a major concern, it's, it's like lifestyle, you get used to it, your body clock becomes immune to those early starts and it, then it becomes a routine and it's not so hard anymore. Um, the most empowering thing about my job is that I can create anything that I like. So I 
I'll give you an example. Um, today I made a Snickers pod donut. Um, and you're sort of probably thinking, what? Um, but pretty much it was this massive sweet pastry taste shell with chocolate mousse, nuts, donut on top of that, chocolate ganache drizzling down, caramel syringe, caramel marshmallow, Mars bar pieces. Um, so that's kind of an example of if you put your mind to something and you have a great passion for it and you love it, your only limit is yourself. Um, the one probably minor thing that you might want to take into account for a baking trade is that the pay isn't as good as what it would be if you were to become a builder or an electrician or a lawyer if you went to university. Um, but that's where Glamour Cake became a big part for me to enhance that because I knew I wasn't earning a lot of money. Um, so I used my passion and my love for what I was doing to try and enhance that and create something more. And, it, and, and you can. And the great thing about the baking industry is that a lot of people are actually doing that and it's becoming more common these days. And some people aren't even fully qualified or haven't done a baking apprenticeship. They're just saying, you know what, I really enjoy baking. Um, I'm going to start baking birthday cakes. Um, you can get your kitchen, home kitchen registered. Um, and you can go through that process which um, isn't actually that hard to do and you know if you have a love and a passion for something do it go for it it doesn't have to be baking it can be anything just get in there put your head down and do what you love um, a bit of advice that I probably give to people which I have only just come to realize now is that no matter what you do you can't please everyone um, and there's always going to be that one person or someone chucking their opinion in and saying well why are you doing that you know and they'll put you down or they'll make you question what you're doing but you just have to sit back and think actually no I'm not going to let your opinion um, affect my passion and my love for what I'm doing because I'm doing this because I love it not because you think that I'm not very good at it um, and then you allow that to enhance your passion and your drive and you know when I finished my qualification I just quite happily stuck my hand in the air and said look at me I've done it this is so exciting um, and then I had more drive to do more I wasn't the brightest bulb at school so it was quite an amazing feeling to have finished school become qualified and now become a successful business owner so guys just get stuck into it give it a go um, keep your hands dirty it's just a fantastic feeling to be able to say you've achieved something at the end of it um, I wouldn't change anything for the world I, I just absolutely love what I do so if you guys have any questions um, feel free to jump over to my glamour cake page and check out what I'm doing see what you can become what you can do you know your only limit is yourself if you guys have any other queries in regards to apprenticeships and trades you can jump over to www.gotatrade.co.nz um, I just want to thank you guys for watching my live feed tonight I hope I've helped anyone or inspired someone who may be thinking of wanting to do this I've got a trade I've got it made thanks guys